Sophie says she's going to call it Lucy. What happens if it's a boy? She's still going to call it Lucy. During the next three months, Steve drops out of all public competition in an effort to control his diabetes. Jürgen has given him until April to be worthy of his place. He's training alongside the other three, but it's very much a personal battle. Just about managing to do the training. Get pretty tired. from the success you've had over the years that you get a little bit of leeway but I don't think that leeway should be very much you have to uh, be in a unit because of what you can do not what you've done I've got to prove to myself not really to the others but to myself that I'm still good enough and I'm going to be good enough to justify my my slot within within the four and I suppose within the pair with Matthew for April trials, which is supposed to be the supposed to be the plan. Um, and if I'm not uh, not justifying that to myself and also to the others, then um, I'll be looking for something else to do. While Steve faces failure for the first time in his career. The others are enjoying the satisfaction of a successful autumn's training. Me, it's been a, been a good sort of three months, October, November, December. Tests have shown I'm the fittest I've ever been at this time of year. Yeah, it's more of the same. I mean, uh, Jürgen's comment the other day was that what Steve has lost in this break has been more than made up by James and myself coming on. I know Matthew is worried about Steve, not, not so much in terms of illness, but in terms of how often he's turned up. Uh, we haven't seen Steve for nearly two weeks now, I think. Um, went away to Lapland with the kids. Uh, didn't come down between the break and has now gone off skiing for Christmas for two weeks. So, yeah, I mean, it's not ideal. But, I mean, I think in his position, I'd, I'd wait for the results of all these tests. I'd get them over and done with and come back in the new year. So a new year, new start. Hopefully, uh, right as rain. Steve needs to get away from everything. A week before Christmas, he is told he has developed colitis. It seems like one thing after another. He decides to spend Christmas in France with his family. <laughs> He comes out. Not bad that somebody's going to give birth in six weeks' time. Venturing out onto the slopes. Quite impressive. I think half the fun with Christmas as you get older is seeing the fun and the excitement that the kids get out of it. Bringing back your own youth. I think he's been. Yeah, because it's seven o'clock. He comes at two o'clock. Right, we'll have a look downstairs and see if he's been. Shelley, Shelley and Susie. James spends Christmas in Denmark with Emily's family. So we've had a bit of a few beers, a bit of dinner. It's now 10 o'clock. And now you open your presents and then you go to church. Which I haven't been to church for two, three years. So that's a bit, it's going to be a bit strange. Um, then to come back and have some more beers at midnight or no, one o'clock. And uh, then I don't really know what you do tomorrow. Have some more beers, I imagine. It's pretty much like it. 
Tim and Matthew go to their parents for some home comforts. I love coming down here for Christmas. Well, I love coming down here at any time of the year, actually. Because it's so far away from, uh, from rowing. It's Christmas 1997, and I like it. New Year opens with a round of tests and competitive pairs training. Not having seen Steve for so long, the others don't know what to expect. Even if he wasn't ill, having missed the training he'd missed, he'd be unfit. And he hasn't really admitted that to himself, I think. One of the papers said we were pulling him along for now. Um, which isn't true in terms of his dead weight or whatever, but... Oh, I mean, there's got to be an element that we can pull him in to the group and he can use us a bit. Maybe that'll, that'll help sort of help all of us, really. I mean, uh, can't row a pair, can't row a four or two pairs with only three people. <laughs> the world's best rower for 14 years, Steve is not giving up without a fight. He's refreshed from his Christmas break and throws himself into training. Right then, big boy. Right then. Just before the four go off together on a training camp to South Africa, they are pushed to the limits with tests on the ergo machines, a test they all dread. Steve now feels confident enough to join in. I've had two very good weeks. Done some decent training and at a reasonable, a reasonable level, a level that you could call a, an international men, a men's athlete. So uh, things have been uh, looking a bit brighter. You don't realise of how low and depressed and uh, how hard and how ill that I really felt without really realising it. I've done it. Good girl. To, you start going better because things are starting to go better now. I, I realise of um, having a little bit more energy. He says you want <laughs> on, on the baby front. I can see it coming in the next two and a half weeks while I'm away. We're hoping that um, we can that she can hang on to it until I return. That's still ten days before the due date. But who knows? Who knows of, uh, when a baby's going to arrive? So uh, it's in the, uh, the lap of the gods. The African camp is one of many leading up to the Olympics. The idea is that the four will benefit from intensive training abroad, away from the distractions of friends and family. Where are we going? Soon. What's the time? Uh, Quarter to five. I thought we had to leave at four. <laughs> Something like that. Oh my word! Look at these girls out with sunglasses. Yeah. It's difficult uh, leaving family behind at this time. Trying to get the kids to behave. They normally play up when I go away, and uh, with Anne being pregnant, it's pretty tough on her. So.